Hey, what's up? It's Phoenix. Welcome to my channel. I hope that you'll check out my other videos and I hope that you'll check out my books. Also, welcome to my Mind and Art series where I talk about the conjunction of art with mental health concerns and where I tie them together, often understanding recovery and often understanding how the mind can relate to very abstract at times but also very appealing and practical thoughts about our lives and about how it relates to mental health. I'm super stoked because today I'm going to talk about Diary of a Madman by his name is Jason Dunphy and this is a book that I read recently and I'd like to talk about a few of the themes and things that I observed while reading this book. So I actually found it offhand. I went to Marissa's bookshop in Salt Lake and found this book on sale uh, and I decided that I would check it out. And I approach writing and narrative from two lenses. One is my lens of my own curiosity and passion for words my own curiosity about narrative and about how we construct stories and how we put thoughts and emotions and experiences and ideas together into stories. But I also look at it from the other side of my life through the lens of disappointment and feeling like you failed to where I take my art, such as my writing, very seriously, but I've often struggled by feeling as though my narratives don't capture what I hope they will that they're not good enough, that they're not interesting. And so with that being the case, with us being an easy critic of ourselves and the works of others, it's easy for me to take a very critical view of the text that I read. I could be overly analytical and very and reject a lot of what they're expressing. But there's another side to it, which I think is this openness and curiosity that I feel, this desire to understand writing, this desire to understand narrative, especially as it involves recovery, recovery from mental health concerns or even drug addiction. I myself have struggled with mental health struggles with schizophrenia and my diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder with bipolar, where I've definitely struggled to deal with the world and to deal with my own mental health stuff. And so I was actually really interested in reading this book because I liked the title and I approached it from that perspective of curiosity and passion and the love of stories and the love of narratives and studying narratives. And this is what I would say about Diary of a Madman. You could be critical. You could say, well, maybe the book was a little bit too short, or maybe the book didn't capture the intensity of the experience because it was very, it wasn't, um, as fleshed out as maybe other books that are more literary and high profile would do. But I think all of that is a mistake because I've been thinking about my approach to language and narrative and I struggle because I love words, I love complexity, but I have been taking the bitter pill and looking at it from the opposite of how I normally think about things as needing to be very dense and complex and complicated and to be like 1000 page novels. So, for example, maybe we should all write stories like David Foster Wallace writing Infinite Jest, which was about addiction, actually, and mental health stuff, such as anxiety, and looking at it from this complex lens, this maximalist lens. But there is a place in writing and literature, which I think of writers like Dennis Johnson and Jesus' Son, which is about addiction and the struggles there. But I also think about this book, Diary of a Madman, because it's a very straightforward, concise narrative that hits to the heart of the matter and that gets to the point of what this is really all about and it does it by not going into too much complexity by letting the complexity come through the experience itself and i'll admit i like this approach i like the approach of being very straightforward i think the reality is like a lot of my works are very long and and maybe sometimes too complicated so to write about your story of recovery, of dealing with mental illness in this diary of a madman, 
you know, in less than 100 pages or so. Being able to convey that narrative with very concise bullet point chapters, I think is a gift. And it's a, it's a medicine for me to swallow of like, why does everything that I have to communicate have to be so complicated? Why does it have to use jargon? Why does it have to use words that are not straightforward? Why does it have to use such obfuscating language? And granted, I look at narrative from both perspectives, from the perspective of complexity, such as in the realm of Joyce and American writers such as William Faulkner, but then also looking at it like Dennis Johnson and Jesus Son, where it is a very straightforward narrative, where it isn't trying to to overemphasize the details in purple prose, you could say. And this is what I learned reading this book, which is I was like, what if I could write this way? What if I could think about mental illness in such a stripped down, but beautiful and elegant way of thinking and writing and being? And I admit it's hard for me, because often when I think about writing, I look at it too much from the perspective of my own biases and sometimes baggage and sometimes the emotional and linguistic baggage. And I didn't write my own autofiction slash autobiography, you could say, uh, of The Street Kid, which incorporated a lot of maximalism, such as what you would find with Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. But looking at it from this perspective of like, what really matters with the conveying of our experience? And what I think is so effective about this book is the fact that it captures it from the perspective of this urgency that you can tell that the writer is is understanding his own life by writing about his very heartbreaking experiences and the reason why i think this is important here is because that is the essence of recovery that is what this is all about what we are trying to accomplish to have a healthy relationship with our ideas and our experiences and our words to be able to communicate that to be able to express it and to find healing through that cathartic ability of being able to communicate and that to me is what gets at the heart of it and why this is part of my mind and art series is because sometimes the simplicity of our account of what's happening is actually the very thing that underscores and highlights what it is that we are actually getting at when we talk about the human condition when we talk about struggling with mental illness and it's very hard for me to not be maximalist and to not think about things in such a concise way and so reading something that is basically the polar opposite, closer to Hemingway, for example, than how I might think about things, has been really interesting as an experiment into thinking about recovery in this straightforward, simple, and beautiful way. And I really like that idea. Now, this book is really disorienting. There's one chapter where he talks about his brief encounters when he's entering the hospital, the mental hospital. And what that feels like when he sees so many things that are so disorienting. And this is very true to my experience when I think about how I have been disoriented, not just from my mental illness, but also living in the community where people struggle with mental illness by growing up, by having to go to the hospital multiple times. And I think it's really interesting the way that he captures this direct experience of struggling to accept that he is a teenager with a mental health condition, probably partly brought on by drug use, partly brought on through trauma, but also partly just something that exists it for its own sake because of genetics or neurobiology and not fully understanding what's going on with that experience. And so the reason why this book really resonates with me is because this is an example of that down-to-earth communication of a very difficult experience with mental health, with a mental health condition. And the whole book is like that where like, He's describing his experiences, you know, where he was trying to hitchhike, where he was trying to run away, where he was trying to self-medicate. And these are very real concerns with someone who struggles with mental illness. And I admit, I like the title Diary of a Madman from Schizophrenia to Peace because the main title describes this feeling of this self-stigma. And as someone who struggled with his identity, myself included, it's been this very difficult thing where I've been unsure how to look at my experiences, how to think about things, what to make of it. And that's why I think the most down to earth, straightforward way of describing an experience can be so powerful and often overlooked because I'll admit that in my experience of my mental health stuff, it's been very difficult knowing what to do 
It's been very difficult knowing how to communicate it. And so being able to strip it down is obviously very valuable. And being able to tap into those emotions as a consequence of the disorientation, of the fear, of the anxiety, being able to acknowledge that you are someone who was beat up a little bit by life because people made fun of you for having mental illness. And Jason does a good job describing these things because he talks about the negative impact of what his mental illness was doing both internally and externally, like being in, in uh, juvenile detention centers, having to deal with uh, the justice system, having to deal with mental hospitals. And I think he does a very good job at capturing the poise that it takes to be able to think about these things, to go from such harrowing and disorienting experiences to being able to come out on the other side. And this to me is what really hits the nail on the head and what gets to the heart of it and gets to the root of it, which is that in my work, I try to help people struggling with mental illness. I try to help them struggling with their mental health concerns and, and addiction. I never struggle with addiction, but I think of that. And that's what this is really about, which is recovery, which to me, what matters here is that people that are in recovery and are trying to do better in life can do better. They can find that creative expression within themselves as this character who writes and does music. This ability to find resiliency and find the strength within yourself to overcome very difficult times in your life. And that's what I love about it. Because to me, it captures the experience of wanting to recover, wanting to do better. And I love the last chapter of this book because I think it's actually the longest chapter in the book. But it's this very down-to-earth description of how he is now living in recovery and how the whole narrative before was talking about his experiences in these kind of recounting episodes of what he's experiencing. But then there is the other element, which is that he is actually recovered. He is doing better. And he is able to capture it in these straightforward terms. And not only is it helpful to look at things in this stripped down fashion as a kind of expression and communication and this ability to get that across, but it's also in terms of how he structured the book and how he wrote the book and how he thinks about things, which is that this book I can imagine was very cathartic to him to be able to create, doing music, being able to live in the world and be successful. When the prospects are very low for you to be able to survive when you have mental illness and you struggle with it, it seems to me that that's partly what's so amazing about being able to get through is that it is the heart of recovery. When you're able to live a happy life and you're able to overcome the difficult things you've experienced, I just find that very moving. And I think this is what this book captures very well, which is this ability to be able to have that understanding, to be able to realize that you can get through and that you can have a happy life and that things can be wonderful, and that you can find joy. That is the essence of recovery and what I try to encourage with people who are struggling with mental illness and struggling with addiction, to remember that. So yeah, I'm Phoenix. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you being here, and yeah, I will see you soon. Thank you for watching.